You what? Sub. Sub. All right. So um, today we're going to do kind of a big review, and hopefully, I'll kind of address ways that you can speed up your workflow a little bit. Um, so we're going to go over brushes and symbols again, and then we're going to learn um, about the appearance panel, which I don't, I think I've mentioned before, but I have some new aspects of it that I want to talk about. And then graphic styles, remember, uh, and more, a little bit more about textures kind of as we go along with kind of laying out the catalog. So I made this uh, mood board kind of fall inspired just to kind of guide my demos over the last couple classes here. Um, and I did in the last class make one look for the collection and I also decided already on my color palettes. So I have three different color palettes introduced. I only chose four colors for each of them, but you could definitely choose more. Um, and then I made this like, you know, little capelet. I'm not so sure about this purple color, but it's good. Um, so we'll try to make something else dramatic. So we, we did already use the clasp in here, but I'm going to use the same symbol to talk about symbols. So let me actually get rid of the fill on these guys. So. Um, I used the spiral tool to make these spirals just as an aside. Um, the spiral tool does exist under the line tool. Then you can click and drag to make spirals. And if you just click once, you can adjust the number of segments so we can get a much bigger spiral um, or at least more, uh, more twists. Or you can adjust the decay, which is like how fast it, uh, it turns. We need more than that. Um, how 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 quickly it expands, right? So we made a really big spiral. All right. So just just as an aside, and then I put a gradient on it. So we're also going to review gradients today because gradients are fun. So with um, with these objects selected, uh, we are going to grab the gradient tool and click on them to apply the gradient, I think. God. Why? Hold on, let me... Ah, not on the right layer, maybe? I'm so sorry. I've forgotten how to apply a gradient, I think. I did it earlier today. All right. We will just hit control Z. Oh no, I was on the stroke. I'm sorry. That's a that's a that's a common mistake. So the gradient tool, you still need the uh, the fill tool in front of it before you can apply a gradient. Um, so I can grab it and um, I can get rid of the fill on these upper guys. Let me ungroup it. <coughs> so I want to set up a gradient that kind of gives it a sheen, like a light, dark, light feel to it. And this um, is going to be a lot simpler than the kind of shading that's going on in the actual thing that I traced underneath, um, but that's okay. So I can grab, uh, you make another color on the gradient. See, this is a subtle change, how my mouse at the bottom of the gradient slider is turning, got a plus symbol next to it, turning white. Um, and I, so I can choose that dark there. And then if I want it to be um, at an angle, I can just adjust the angle slider. Um, and then if I need it to be, you know, have a, a sharper white section, I can bring these little median points inward 
um, or outward. Uh, let's do it to the other one. So for the other one, maybe we'll make one that has kind of two sheens on it for whatever reason. So again, we want the stroke, I mean the fill on top, the stroke underneath. So the fill is on top and we can grab the gradient from tool and click on it. Um, so let's add in another kind of gray. Yeah, that gray is probably fine. And then a white. So it doesn't go gray, white, black, white. It goes white, gray, white. Um, yeah, and then we can adjust the angle again. And grabbing the gradient tool allows you to adjust on the object, like how far the gradient expands, you know, where the median points are on these. We could make the shimmers, you know, really thin. Um, we can spread it out further. You can adjust the angle in here if you like. Lots of gradient options. Um, Okay, so once you have these, it's nice to have a symbol library. So I already have a symbol library in here that we probably built during class at some point, which includes um, a lot of these garments, these kind of early garments. Um, we have, you know, a shirt, we have my original croaky pants and a skirt in there already. Um, at this point in your career, you probably don't have enough symbols to really worry about like splitting them up into, you know, clothes and then notions. Like you could do that for sure, but I'm just gonna drop, I'm just gonna drop this guy in the symbol library. Uh, we want a graphic symbol, although I think it's I, I think it works no matter what you choose when you drag a symbol in here. Um, so now we can uh, access this symbol. Um, in here as often as we need and we can save it as a library uh, and access it elsewhere. So if I choose the little library symbol and choose save symbols, a little stack of books there, save symbols, um, we can save it and it's going to try to have you save it, save it in the symbol library for this computer, um, but if you want to be able to access it and kind of maybe take it home or whatever, you can save it you know, wherever you want on your desktop, we'll save. So now if I were to open up a new file um, and I look at my symbols and my, my library isn't there anymore, right? I don't have any access to my clothes. All I have to do is choose this little guy and choose other library and then find that, uh, that library. Um, and there she is. So we can, uh, you know, drag out my my woman. We can drag out a shirt. We can drag out a skirt. All really quick. Uh, okay. So I think I want to do like a long. A long dress really quick um, and I'm actually going to use this skirt and this top and like union them together in order to make the dress uh, and what I really want to encourage you guys to do is to use your old projects to make this project like unless you're doing something so completely different that it has like no no common ground like you should be able to to at least start from things that you've already built which will be a big time saver and is an appropriate way to make flats like that's very common is working off of things that already exist and just adapting them uh so i cannot edit this symbol very much until i break the link right so it's up here um, I'm sure it lives somewhere in these drop-down panels, but at least on layouts, it is up here. So you can choose break link on both of them, and then we probably still have to do some ungrouping. Oh yeah, I want to put 
this image on its own layer. Do you guys remember how to move stuff from layer to layer? Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple. Um, when you have this guy selected, this little blue dot, or this is my favorite way to do it anyway, the little blue dot is, represents everything you have selected on the page. So you just click and drag wherever you want it to be and see the color of it changes. So I can lock that guy and now it's not bothering me. Use layers. Okay, ungroup, ungroup, ungroup. All right. So I am going to delete kind of any extraneous um, lines in the skirt. Okay, I can get rid of that one and the waistband. And then I'm going to make sure that this bottom piece is filled with a color and the top piece is filled solid. And then we're going to use our Pathfinder tools, our friendly old Pathfinder tools, and we can choose Unite, and we instantly have a dress, right? All I did, I had a skirt and a dress, and I grabbed them, and I chose Unite. And now I had, well, I had a skirt and a top, and now they're a dress, you know. And now we'll send them to back. So we'll get those lines back, but we'll send, we'll keep these in the back, geez. Um, okay. Let's uh, let's even let's even add the sleeves in. Maybe this is a dress and it's got interesting sleeves. So we'll union those in. Grab the dress too. Union, and then you know we could convert these sleeves to smooth anchor points, and we could bring them down and make them smaller. So it's got kind of a weird. I don't know. It's kind of a loose fitting loose fitting sleeve um, and it's got no seams on it or maybe it's a raglan seam so we could grab the line segment tool and draw lines to the collar let's make it a turtleneck um, you know it's it, you like these things can take time, but you don't have to go crazy trying to do new stuff. It's not cheating in a, like to use to use your old stuff. I'm kind of doing this. So we'll fill it with whites and send it to back. Maybe these should have a little bit of curve. We can add an anchor point to these straight lines. And when we first move the anchor point, um, you would see that it's actually a corner anchor point, right? But we can just convert it to a smooth. So that will leave some rooms for like, you know, breasts. Okay, so we need to add a brush to this guy. What kind of brush should I use? Um, some sort of trim, trim brush, some lace, some leaves. There's a lot of leaves on my design board. Um, oh God. Do you guys have any ideas? Let's do some, let's do a lace trim. So we will try to find a lace repeating pattern that we can copy really quick. Something less intricate. Here we go. So I'm gonna put this on its own layer and uh, turn off the underneath layers so I can just focus on making this brush for a second. Um, we, this actually isn't wildly complicated, um, but I am probably still going to use like the, uh, the bounding box function, which I'll, uh, I'll talk about in a little bit. So we can draw a bunch of circles for these dots. Remember, um, Alt, click, 
click and drag when I have the little two, two mice next to each other there. Alt, click and drag immediately copies. So you can really quickly uh, work and place objects that are exactly the same. Um, I can do a little tracing down here. And get that to be just a white line. Uh, are you guys familiar with the with tool? I don't know how often we talk about it. Let me make this a different color so you're able to see. Um, with the width tool, I can click onto objects and control the width of a line individually. Like it's not dependent on the rest of the line. Um, so I can get more kind of depth in there. And last, pretty much the last thing. Oh, I lost a dot there. Probably give it a dot in the center here. It's just these. Um, doo -doo -doo. Pen tool. I'll probably just grab the width tool again and just make that thicker at the top, which I think will look kind of interesting. Um, no, so there, I know there's a way, there is, I, I think I can do this. There is a way that I can copy and rotate at the same time. So like in order to make a flower, I think I can do this. I'm not, I'm actually not super sure. Um, no, because I think you need the rotate tool Yes, and then so that's actually where the rotate tool is going to rotate right now, but there's a way to place it. Yeah, so I placed, I can, I alt clicked there and um, I rotated it to the center. All right, no, I just had to click and then I can hold alt. Ah! <laughs> so let me start again. Um, redo. So with the rotate tool, you can click to place where it's going to rotate around. So I can click the center of the, I had to have this selected before I chose the rotate tool. Pretty typical for tools here. So you have, I have my petal selected. This is just a quick how to make a flower quickly demo. Um, I have this guy selected, chose the rotate tool, click on the center of the circle, and now Alt is going to automatically copy whatever I click on, just like a normal selection tool. So I can Alt click and release, and then keep doing that. Um, yeah, so Alt, I think. Now, of course, it hates me. I got it to work once. So that's better than I expected. Okay. It's just that it keeps, huh, now it just wants to rotate this one guy. So maybe that didn't save any time because I had to think about it so hard. <laughs> but here we are. I didn't have to copy and paste it and rotate it a million times. Um, I'll, so click on the center and then I'll click on this. Nope. All right. There we go. I don't know. That's an option. Um, so with this guy all laid out like this, I want to draw a bounding box, which, um, you might be familiar. This is how we used it when we made the zipper. Um, I want it to line up with the center of my circles and then I can kind of adjust 
uh, the rest of it to kind of balance, uh, or at least the bottom part a little bit. I'll adjust that. Um, so I want it to have no stroke and no fill, and it has to be in the back. I, I actually made a mistake earlier where I sent it to the back, and then I sent another piece to the back, and then I was like, why didn't it work? Because that new piece was the one that was in the back of the stack now. Um, so let's look at what this looks like. I just want to get this guy inside the bounding box, and then I think we'll be all set. Um, so with all of those selected, we can drag them into our brush panel and choose pattern brush. And there's no gaps in between my lines, so I can hit OK and try it out. Actually, that line, this is blue, so that's no good. Um, white, white, please. Pattern brush, okay. So now it's all white, so I can't see it. Um, so let's test it out with a line. Looks great. Let's make sure that that color is editable because I don't know that white is uh, going to be appropriate, so. Um, hue shifts. I can never actually, I think I've been getting it wrong which one of these chooses the exact shade. So um, I think any of these would work fine. And we can hit OK. And then whatever color we have in our color picker should be the color of the whole, the whole garment. Or the whole brush, I mean. All right, so let's see how that works out on our brush. I mean, on our garments. We'll give it lace cuffs or something. Maybe we'll just try copying and pasting this line. And we got to make it much smaller. So I could have made the whole um, brush stroke smaller before I uh, before I brought it in, but that looks kind of nice. So um, lace is kind of tricky because of like this might actually be transparent hanging off the edge like this and I could just add in like a little straight line like this or something. Um, oh, those are very fine lines. To kind of represent the edge of it. Um, and then anything that was underneath there would be transparent. Uh, come on. Right? Uh, which is just an interesting kind of distinction to make. I don't know why. Why does it have this? Hmm. I don't know why you can see the line there, the original line, but I guess that's not the end of the world. Um, so we could even try adding this on the bottom of her dress. My favorite way to copy and paste a long curvy line like this with a ton of anchor points in it is to copy and paste the whole larger garments really quick. And then I grab my white selection tool and I delete all the other anchor points besides the ones that I need. Right, so then we're left with that guy. Um, and we can drop it on there and try to apply our brush with a point one. So this might need some finessing, but it, it does, I don't know, it gets the point across. Um, something that might help actually is cutting this line up 
um, like cutting it at the anchor points might simulate the fabric going behind itself better than it's doing right now. So I just grabbed the scissor tool and I'm cutting it and now it's giving me kind of a straighter edge at these moments. Um, kind of. Some of them still need finessing, but we could go in and draw our uh, our I don't know, fullness lines, I guess. And these, this is what will probably make the biggest difference in like how effective this is, I think. Um, if you needed the lace to be a solid color, uh, you would just have to use two colors in your original brush artwork. Um, and like include, oh, a, you know, a color behind it. I don't know what I'm trying to do here. Yes, I guess. Um, looks okay, I guess. Oh, so I can grab that and just reflect it across really quick. Alt click on the center and choose copy didn't quite line up. Oh, it's just backwards. So you can flip a brush upside down if it ever does this um, pretty easily by going to, yeah, so you select the object and then in the brush panel you choose options of selected object and you can choose flip across and then it flips it across the line. So if it's ever like going backwards for what you expected the brush to be. Um, all right, let me do, let me get some color on this. So I earlier, um, I decided my color palette and then I added them to my swatch panel. Remember, we can do that um, by, I'll trash these guys. Uh, yes, oh, what did I do? <laughs> So with it all selected, we can choose new color group down here, the little folder on the swatch panel. We can hit OK. And the black is in there because there's a black outline on all of them, but that's OK. Um, so we can do that for all of them. And then all I've done is chose the library and chosen save swatches. And I saved it on the desktop. I've already done that. Um, so back here, or wherever I was drawing that object. I can um, choose this and go to other library and find it. Um, I think it was called this. And there is our little swatch library for this project. So from that, I can choose the exciting colors that I would like. Um, and I guess we'll just bring this into like my layout world now. No, I'm gonna make a back for it. Um, so I'm just going to alt, click and drag on it and get a duplicate really quick. Uh, and what do I have to do to make the back? I probably don't need like the breast um, area in the raglan sleeve. Um, and I can choose both of these and drag them until they're kind of straight. And same with this, I can line that up and adjust. Well, that's, that was quick enough. Um, now I could just copy and paste this guy and send it to the back over here. Um, if I start on an anchor point with my black selection tool and I drag it over to another anchor point that I want to align it with. These are the same anchor point. Uh, I can just release it as soon as it turns white, and I'll know it's perfectly aligned. So I can grab these and bring them into the catalog I've been playing with. Um, and we're going to talk more about the catalog next week, but we can kind of touch on it now. Um, 
And actually, I want to step back and do some appearance panel and graphic styles on like denim. We'll make another denim garment. Uh, I'm just going to make a new artboard though and paste this guy in here. Doo -doo -doo. So if we wanted to uh, to make some denim pants the way I have traditionally been doing it, denim pants aka jeans, um, the way I've traditionally been doing it is with like stacking layers. So if I were to put a denim texture on this, um, let's actually do this. I have a denim texture already in this document, so I'll do it over here. Sorry to jump around. So if I have some pants and I can break the link to the symbol pants that I used, um, let's apply a denim texture. I'm going to ungroup a bunch of it too. Sorry. Okay. Denim. Right click on it. I'm going to scale down the texture, right? Right click, arrange, or sorry, transform, scale, uncheck transform objects. Um, first off, if I want to make sure that each of them has the same exact uh, scaling, right? Because I could make a mistake when scaling down the texture and uh, make it too big or too small on one leg versus the other. That is a good use of the graphic styles. Um, so we can choose new graphic style and it will um, it will keep track of the scale it was placed at when it was brought into that graphic style. Does anyone remember, because I haven't said it yet, what graphic styles do? No? No one? Graphic styles? They save they save the stroke and the fill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they save the stroke and the fill. So if I had another object that had, you know, totally different, it had, you know, no stroke or it had a green stroke um, and it had, you know, giant, giant blue stroke, if I choose my new blue jean symbol, I can immediately make it blue jean with black outline. Okay, so traditionally when I would make these jeans um, have a gradient mesh on them, right, like we went over last week or maybe the week before, um, and when I would like try to make them different colors, I would do this by stacking layers, and this is something that just makes sense to me, but there is a, like a slightly different way to do it using the appearance panel. So the appearance panel keeps track of all of the effects and all of the strokes and fills that are on an object. Um, it's a little bit different than the graphic styles panel, which like can save it and then apply it to new objects. This is just keeping track of the one object. Right, guys? Get, let's like get through it. I like this stuff could actually be helpful to you. Um, we have just a little bit longer on the demo. Um, do, do, do. So, we have the appearance panel. It's got a list of the black stroke and the fill on it. Um, and then down here, I could add a new effect, right? If I wanted to add a drop shadow to it, I could do that through here. And then this is also where you get rid of drop shadows. So if you've ever added a drop shadow to something and then been like, I don't know how to get rid of this drop shadow, which I feel like I have run into in the past. This is how you do it. You use the appearance panel and we can choose that and hit trash and it will get rid of that effect, I think. Oh my God. Oh no, that's just the opacity, that's why. You can't delete the opacity on it. Um, oh God, why didn't it go away? There it goes. Okay, 
So I can also add a new fill and a new stroke. This is something kind of unique about the appearance panel. So if I choose new fill, I can choose purple, and then under the purple, I can choose, click on the opacity, and the opacity menu pops up. Remember the opacity menu from over here? This is the only place we can make uh, multiply happen. You can adjust the opacity of just the fill in here. So we can choose multiply, and now there's two layers of fill in one object. It's still just one object. Um, so that's like a little bit of a different way to do things. And the benefit of that is that in, I'm sorry, I lost the graphic styles. In the graphic styles panel, we can um, add it and it has all of those fills on it. So we could instantly make a purple gene if we needed to, or just a colored gene, you know, because as soon as we choose this one and apply it, I can adjust the color to a different color if I want it instantly, uh, as long as I have the appearance panel open. Um, so that is that. Um, I don't think that this can handle, that the appearance panel can handle also being a gradient mesh. Um, so what I would do is definitely still copy and paste in front, um, and I'm actually going to delete my second fill. I don't need that guy anymore. Um, so we're going to make that kind of textured gene that's so possible, that's so popular. Someone was asking me what else you would use the gradient mesh for, and I was having trouble coming up with other examples of um, garments that are like more intentionally different colors. I guess this... Uh, uh, like jeans have such a distinct gradient in them that you do need this gradient mesh tool. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have my gray stuff out. Default swatches, art and illustration there. So I can choose something like 75% gray. You don't wanna go all the way to 100% black because um, you won't be able to see any of, the, any of the gene texture on the black parts. So with this guy, I can go to Object, Create Gradient Mesh. You have to choose to center on that drop-down menu, and it gives us this little gradient. And then all I have to do is go Arrange, Send to Back. You know, I'm actually going to take a little bit of a detour and try. Nope, didn't like that. Did not like that. Okay. Um, arrange, Send to Back. I thought maybe we'd be able to add a uh, fill to the mesh, but it didn't, didn't, it didn't let me keep my gradient. So then this just has to be changed to a multiply opacity, and I can do that in the appearance. I could also do it in the transparency menu. Appearance, looking at the overall opacity and set it to multiply. I could maybe have even used a slightly lighter gray on the original. Um, I'll do it one more time, edit copy, edit paste in front, let's get rid of any of the extra stuff and choose that kind of like 75% gray. We'll choose one lighter this time, see how it looks. Um, and then object, create gradient mesh. It might appear at first on flat and that would not help you, you have to do two center. And then all you have to do is send it to back and make sure the top layer then is slightly opaque. Let's apply. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's get these purple. Ah, let's change the effect of this purple. So that is denim and um, what I would probably do is if I were doing swatches of this denim I would grab a square and I would apply that style to it and create three of those right um,
And then I can start, you know, using the appearance panel or changing, just changing the fill color straight up, but choosing uh, the other colors from my other um, palette collections. So the way I would prefer, like that I would lay this out, trying to, starting to discuss the layout here, is that the main palette that's shown on all of the clothes be the consistent, consistently the same palette, right? So all of my clothes are going to be shown in this light bright palette that I named my palettes, I don't know. Um, and then I'm showing the color options with light bright palettes and then dusky earth palettes and then the, the pastel planet palettes. And same down here, it's gonna be consistent on all of them the first, second, and third, first, second, and third. That's the idea. Um, it's, not, it's not the end of the world. And uh, also probably that's like one of, one of the least noticeable things, as long as you have the color chips um, and like having the texture on the color chips or having the different prints available for your garments, um, all of that is, is key in this kind of layout style. Um, yeah, so I don't know how much deeper I want to get into um, into the layout yet. Uh, oh, I forgot to make more copies of this handout I have, but it's it is here in Moodle, handout tips for layout. Um, your layout should show off the clothes. So I spent a lot of time um, making sure, like that's related to this one, that my background doesn't compete with the clothes. And I'm actually not even sure that I did the best job. Like there might be too much going on up at the top here. Um, but like just a gradient or just a simple texture in the background uh, will be good. Anyway, we will uh, probably hit on this again next, next week. Um, think about blowing up design details like I did right here uh, when, we, when we used this symbol. And actually, what might be fun is to have this symbol like a couple times, right? Um, God. And then I could break the link and ungroup it um, and like group the separate sides because I don't think they are. Um, and I could show, like, maybe it has two clasps and one of them is unclasped a little bit, which would just be like a more, like an interesting way to do things and a good use of symbols. Um, so we can make these both a lot smaller. And then we can separate them a little bit. I mean, it's opened up. It's just clasped at the top of the neck. Uh, it's just something to think about. And then I did this blown up like design detail here and I did that using a clipping mask. Um, another interesting thing to note is that when we designed um, this repeating pattern for or this brush for the rope, it did this thing where um, like, let's say I wanted to put the rope on, on the neck here. So I can choose that and then choose my rope brush and we'll make it smaller. That wasn't, that wasn't exactly the problem. I did make it too big. Um, but it like pokes out because there's like extra artwork um, involved with the original brush. It, it pokes out. So if I wanted to, this to be, if I wanted this to be even, I can do that pretty easily um, by copying and pasting. So uh, let me ungroup this, I guess. We can grab this shape, uh, edit, copy, and then it has to be in the way front. So arrange, bring to front. And then with both of them selected, it's, it's just right click, make, 
clipping mask or object clipping mask make. And then it's clipped to the edges. And that is pretty common with brushes for them to have like too much artwork involved. Um, okay, trying to think anything else. Appearance, graphic styles could really be handy for you guys. Um, definitely try to get some nice gradients in there. Consider using brushes, they speed up your workflow. Definitely try to use your old projects to make this project easier because you only have a week to do all of these flats. Uh, so we will, yeah, we will take a break until 3.30 and then unless you guys really want to do a mood board critique, we can just do work time. This, this, okay, if you want to talk to me about your mood boards individually, I'm de like definitely approach me, but it's okay. We'll just we'll just go straight into work time. It's a lot of work. So thank you guys. Unless you have any questions, okay, cool. Alice, it's light. There's a slight difference. So I was thinking that like a trend board would have more garments. Definitely. 